Hello everybody and welcome to today's watch party for the 1985, I'm going to call it classic, if you're British this is a real classic, Santa Claus the movie. As always, I'm Andrew and I'm joined by a very festive Dominic. Welcome Dom. Hello everybody. Okay, so everybody, today's sync point will be, as there's lots of different ways people are watching it with different distributors, it'll be where it says Alexander Solkind Presents on screen. But while you're all getting sorted with uh, getting your copies queued up, Let's go through and do a bit of a roll call, see who's joining us today. Over on YouTube, I can see Hell If I Know saying, Merry Christmas to all the cinephiles out there. Well, Merry Christmas to you. And here we go. And now let's look over at our Discord crew who's with us today. I can see uh, Onzi's floating around. I don't know if he's joining us. Mad Matt, Eric, Sharon. Uh, I know Sharon is going to maybe not be joining us today, but welcome, Sharon, anyway. Uh, Icy Matty, uh, Brainwire, Mr. Furzel. Uh, Lizard Man, I'm not sure if you said that, and Phonic. Okay, so Dom, you are British and you've never seen this before, which I think is a probably a generational thing. Uh, it's probably the reason I was uh, evicted from the country and now I'm here in the colonies. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. yes, I've never seen this movie. I'm aware of it. I I, I remember going through TV channels when I was younger mm -hmm. and looking around Christmas times and seeing this. And assuming it was the Tim Allen one, so I was everybody like, thinks that everybody thinks that this it. is not the Tim Allen one. This is made by the Soul Kinds, <laughs> and it's as we get into it, it's got some interesting stuff. What I would say is, it's technically gorgeous. It looks so good. This film because it's made by the production people behind the Superman movie, Supergirl, the Flying Effects. Exactly. Santa Claus with no E on the end. It's not clauses in clause of a contract. It's actually the Santa Claus. Um, Santa Claus, not Santa Claus. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Welcome, Stephen Pattinson uh, from uh, Plantation in Florida. We're very good. Very good. And how are you, sir? Great to have you joining us today. So, everybody, if you're ready, let's get this show on the road and start enjoying this movie that's a a cult classic in the UK is the best way to describe it, really. It's an absolute classic here. So on the count of five, four, three, two, one, press play. And yeah, the the titles, the credits here, yeah. at least very Superman. <laughs> it's Christmas-themed Superman. It really is Christmas-themed Superman when you get through this. But what you will notice is it has gorgeous matte paintings. The flying effects are great. The score is good. It's Henry Mancini. Everyone brings their A-game to it. It's just... It, maybe the script's a little hollow? I don't know. The, the, the plot's a bit strange, and the plot's almost uh, hypocritical, which I'll kind of go through when we get <laughs> to it without spoiling the plot of the movie for you. But this... It this does feel like a... a the Superman Christmas special. Like, I'm just it getting does. Those vibes. It really does. It really does. I'm waiting for the uh, the voiceover to be like, "All was a slumber in Metropolis that year." <laughs> we will see. You'll see some great map paintings, great effects, some really good animatronics for the era. The voiceover. <laughs> it is. It really is, isn't it? It's brilliant. This is lovely, though. That the snow effect is yep. real. This is a painting, though. It's such a surreal. And now it's a set, of course. But yeah, I wonder why films don't do that more often because that was pretty. That was pretty. Yeah. It was like a, a a storybook that I was looking at, but it was coming at me. Yeah, Calbot. This was a bit of a bo welcome, Calbot, as well. But it was a bit of a box office bomb. This, unfortunately, but it's shot beautifully. It's really got that lovely soft filter on it. And Lizardman says, "I feel cold just looking at it." It feels warm in <laughs> feels warm in the cabin. The wen the Wendigoons. Vendicum. Oh. Granny, what's the event to come? Just a couple of huskies chilling there. So the 
funny thing is, uh, I'm mm. in the process of my literature masters, and I was studying a lot of Dickensian literature, and how a lot of them were sold on uh, an image, uh, like a picture, when pictures started coming into it, where uh, book art started becoming a thing. And a lot of the artwork is this scene. It's like mm. grandmother or grandfather by the fireplace in a cabin telling a story to 15 or 16 ingrate kiddos. Well, they were accurately spinning wool there. They, she was carding the uh, wool first, which is where you have like two brushes and you brush it against each other to get it all soft and get the impurities out of it. Then you pass it to someone to spin on a wheel. I took... I took I learned how to spin wool for some reason in school. <laughs> I don't know why, but we did it. <laughs> oh, now we see David Huddleston, the the big Lebowski himself, mm. playing Santa. Oh, oh, oh! I'm giving a Kinder trauma warning. No, oh. just wait. I mean, he's a, was, was David Huddleston a tall man? He looks a giant, but that's what you want Santa to be, a big bear of a man who... Yeah, who gives the best hugs ever. Mm. You, you will believe he is possibly the greatest on-screen Santa ever. I mean, I've seen elves. I... And that's an animatronic. I'm... Is it? They are animatronics. I can tell now, but the previous scene, it looked real. It's awesome. Yeah. These are elegant animatronics. Well, that's what I'm saying. When you get through this film, you will f think that everyone's brought their A-game to so much of it. And here we go. Oh, welcome, uh, little coffee bandit. He's always been your definitive Santa. He's always been what I think of Santa. Yes, Mad Matt, they used fake and real reindeer, but in the sort of the scene, a lot of the scenes, it was like eating out the troughs. That was, uh, that was an animatronic, and they're real. Yeah. Anything with antlers is such an intimidating creature to me, and it's always so surreal that they're considered just, like, nature's prey. <laughs> oh, I don't God, want to be nasty, but they're, they're really struggling to pull that sleigh, <laughs> then, poor reindeer. Okay, well, I see Matty saying he's seen so many good versions of Santa and really bad. Let's see what you think of him as Santa as we go through this movie. I think he's he's perfect as Santa in this movie. And here we go, getting into the kinder trauma. <laughs> Kurt yeah, Russell Kurt Russ was a great Santa. He was, Eric. He was a great Santa. <laughs> So the reindeer are now collapsing in a snowstorm. Okay, so we're seven minutes into the movie now and the reindeer appears <laughs> to be freezing to death and collapsing. And I, my Listen. personal theory, I'll explain in a minute. No, Calbot, you don't cut open the reindeer <laughs> and crawl inside to keep warm. Well, as the closest thing to the credit EC doctor that we have, I can confirm this is exactly how hypothermia works. You howl out, uh, you scream out going, Ugh! and then you drift off into well, it, the... Well, basically, it appears... So we are now... Seven and a half minutes into the movie. No, we're not going to have a uh, <laughs> the end card. Uh, 
<laughs> Basically, though, it appears that Santa and the reindeer are dead. Yep. And Mrs. Claus is dead. And there goes my dog. He's upset. He doesn't like the fact that Santa died. <laughs> I mean, they all look dead. Mm-hmm. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Versal, five years later. Uh, phonic, not end credits. Eric says depressing movie kind of kids. <laughs> now, I'm going to maintain something here. My my theory about this as an adult, they did die. That the reindeer died, Mr. and Mrs. Claus died. With the scene we're having next, it is a and they Ra have been brought them back. It is a magical resurrection. Coca-Cola sponsored their resurrection and that's right. Back. <laughs> that's right, Coca-Cola. <laughs> but no, I think I honestly think it's because if you look now, they're now in a completely this different is place. Beautiful. It's gorgeous to look at. It is gorgeous. <laughs> but they're in a com look. They're in a completely different place to where they were before. See, I think they did die. But they were resurrected by the Christmas magic. Mm. I see Matty asking, what weapon does Santa really have? He's got ninja stars. Nunchucks. But that's what I want to see when I think of elves. Middle-aged yeah. men in pantomime <laughs> costumes with candles. But look, that cabin that was behind them when they died is gone. <laughs> I can't unsee it now. It's the middle-aged men in pantomime costumes. <laughs> uh, Lil Coffee Bandit agrees, saying, yes, quite interesting, but agree that, that with that theory, Lapland does seem a bit heavenly. It does. And David Peace, welcome, saying, it's like Jacob's Ladder. Everything is happening in the last moments of their consciousness. Yeah. And Lil Coffee Bandit says, bring on the elf puns. God, this is sinister. <laughs> We've been expecting you. But right. as Little Coffee Bandit says, oh, bring on the elf puns. There is... There are many elf puns ahead of us now. But as part of our fantasy series, this is a proper fantasy film. This is magical. Yeah. <coughs> he, he's on there, elves. <laughs> She's a married woman. <laughs> I see Matty's question is, how bad is this movie? It's got a good heart to it. Look, I've seen Dan Haggerty as, as Santa Claus in Elves. I, <laughs> I, I will can't say... watch worse. <laughs> now, oh. look, it's gorgeous to look at this film. This is your new home, Kal-El. I mean, Santa Claus. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Marlon Brando is just going to be around the corner rehearsing his lines. <laughs> exactly, Mr. Fersal. It's the fortress of, uh, I mean, North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> A royal Elf <laughs> confidence. That's a good point, little coffee bandit. Can anyone else think of a movie that has an actual origin of Santa? And I don't mean like the Santa Claus with an E, because that's an established replacement continuity of the new Santa. 
I don't but, think so. But they gave Santa an origin story. This is the, <laughs> this is origin, and much like Superman, in the first like five minutes, he becomes Santa. But how comfortable? Oh, maybe hell if I know the life and adventures of Santa. But how I, awesome are these sets? I want to be there. Yeah, this looks. I have seen this movie. Many years ago, haven't you? I mean, this is... Yes, I have! This is a lightning strike moment where I'm like, wait a minute, this is familiar to me. This is what I'm saying, though. Can you... You can't say they didn't bring their A-game to, like, the sets and... There was not a short actor in the UK who didn't get work that year. <laughs> short kings unite to become elves. Snood. Yeah. But look, this is... What I would say is, they everything that you imagine as a child that Santa's workshop would look like, this yeah. is it. For sure. <laughs> Lizard man, I told you he'd like it. Now pay me my 50 bucks, Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, little copy bandit. Chris Ryan is one of the elves, Mike the cool person in the young ones. Mm -hmm. This room is incredible, we're about to see. Oh, what kid doesn't want to just run through there and pick everything? My understanding is most of this room is actually full of the handmade toys you saw here. And what they did after the production was they donated them to a children's hospital. Oh. Look. I mean, it's... And it's got a great score. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Everything's glistening. Like, it's, <laughs> it has, like, glitter everywhere. Well, it should Christmas do. I mean, cheer. I mean, I think nowadays a lot of us are quite cynical and bitter against just everything for the sake of it. Yeah. I, th I think films like this sometimes do take you back to when you could just believe in a bit of magic. I see, Matty, this movie uh, is fantasy it would fall under. Eric's saying, I think my kid would never want to leave this room. Yeah. The sad thing is, nowadays, it looks like those crappy toy shops. I know. Well, there are all, you know, the towns that always have a forever Christmas-like store. Mm. It's the kind of toys you'd see in there. Yeah, Mr. Fuzz, all, all the wooden primary car is very warm. It looks like a nice... I would love to see, like, a rocking horse in that fireplace there, just... <laughs> Uses kindling. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> it does look like a comfortable bed in a second. I know, but using a ladder to get into your bed every day? Is... I've actually heard of this kind of thing in Norway, genuinely, where... In sort of the cabins, they would have almost the bed as a bedroom in a yeah, similar kind of the arrangement. Entire bed is a, a room in and of itself. Yeah. The idea of being a small room to keep the heat in. Oh, this looks so cozy. It yeah. okay. It looks cozy. Simultaneously, it looks like a level in Resident Evil. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Ah, oh, Blitzen's the stupid one. He's eating your poisoned food. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, little coffee on it. This film feels like two parts to me. The first part is more fantasy magical. The second part plummets into a weird 80s advert. It does. It gets very <laughs> 80s about halfway through. But animatronics, that is lovely work. Yeah, the eye looks glassy, but not dry. Mm. It doesn't look like a doll. So I I never remembered the names of the reindeer, Ah. ever. So everybody who's watching, is this your first time watching it? Let me know. And what are some of your favourite Christmas movies? And I don't mean in any kind of sinister or ironic way, but, you know, hand on your heart, what are some of your favourite Christmas movies? Elves starring Dan Haggard. (laughs) I'm going to just give an... Gremlin's great. I'm going to give an unpopular opinion, by the way. Ooh. Elf is overrated. I had the opposite like thing happen when I was younger. I hated Elf. Mm-hmm. Hated it. And my wife, like two years ago, showed it me again, and I was like, alright, I'll give it a shot. And I freaking love it. Like <laughs> as a kid, I absolutely <laughs> loathed the film. I really like uh, it now. Well, we've got a few people. So, uh, Hell If I Know says agreed about Elf being overrated. And if we go to our Discord friends, we've got Mr. Furzel saying it's his first time watching this movie, but Die Hard's his favourite Christmas movie. Um, Die Hard's a great one. Yeah, Eric says it, this is his first time watching it, and his favourite Christmas movie every year is Christmas Vacation, which is probably yep. my all-time favourite Christmas movie. Phenomenal uh, movie. Mr. Furzel says, this is my first time. I was about 15 when this was released, so I wasn't really interested in a movie about Santa. And Phonics says, first time for me and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Ah, oh, Lil Coffee Bandit on my side, saying, uh, this one is definitely a fave for nostalgic reasons. I do love both the Home Alone films, but also agree that Elf is overrated. Home Alone and is Bra- phenomenal as well. Yeah, and Brainwire says, uh, first time watching it, and it's Christmas Vacation along with A Christmas Story, which, strangely enough, A Christmas Story, which I understand in the States, is an enormous classic that you, a lot of you watch every year. In the UK, it's basically unknown. Yeah. I only knew about it when I got into the film communities of online and started looking into what your, you know Americans would regard as Christmas movies. And then I, I checked out and it was very good, but... This is probably one of our equivalents of a Christmas story here. This is that beloved in the UK. Now, this is interesting. Because Santa Claus, the uh, Saint, uh, Saint Nicholas, or was it? The, the German like myth story originally had him as green. That's right. And Santa... again, it was Coca-Cola that made him red. That's right. Santa used to have a green outfit. And then, uh, as if by magic, when uh, Coca-Cola got involved with, the, I think, the Blum Santa, I believe, um, he changed to red. Mm-hmm. Uh, Haddon, Haddon Sundblum. That's right, and he's called the Sundblum Santa, who's the modern depiction of Santa. I'll tell you what, A Christmas Chronicle, the, um, the Kurt Russell Christmas mm-hmm. movie that came out on Netflix a couple of years back is actually really fun as well. Oh, they are. They are. But here we go. Look how alive these sets are. With just They're huge. They're huge with so much interactive. Look, everything's moving and there's stuff doing things everywhere. Well, welcome David Pease over on YouTube saying uh Santa Claus conquers the Martian. My Christmas movie watch list is Muppet Christmas Carol, Christmas Vacation, mm-hmm. Scrooge and Hogfather. All great, all absolutely brilliant. I really enjoy Scrooged. Scrooged um, is fantastic as well. It's Christmas a, Vacation, Muppet Christmas it's Carol. Very cynical. Is, yeah, uh, I just say my favourite version of a Christmas Carol. I have two Muppet, Muppet Christmas Carol. I'm in the mood for something lighter, but mm. the best, what I would call straight version of Christmas Carol, is a TV movie 
version uh, made with uh, George C. Scott. Mm. It's incredible. It's got David Warner in it. One. Really good. So, yeah, all these toys here, yep, these got donated after the production to a children's hospital, which is nice. As a kid, this set, I would have loved to just play with it. Like, th- this place looks amazing. Like you said, very interactive. So many mm. moving parts. It, the sets are wonderful. The the corridors. Look look how big this set is here. So we can see we're over here and there's still loads of bits here on this enormous set. But in the background, we can see the rotating pillar from whatever they were doing earlier. Yeah. And then we've got this incredible kind of organ thing. And we're about to see. There we go. Yep, here comes soups. Oh, that would be a good edit, Lizard Man, if someone could somehow have Gonzo narrating the George C. Scott version <laughs> of the Christmas Carol. I don't know about this, whether they're all wishing season's greetings to each other. That sounds very hallmark, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Happy non denominational holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Because Santa Claus isn't related to a specific holiday at all. <laughs> Are they just celebrating that it's December 24th or something? It's December 24th, look. But look when you see him in the suit and you tell me this isn't... Yeah, the exact image you think of with Santa. Wait until he stood up properly with the hat and everything, and you're just like... Oh, yeah. I'm thinking the poor guy must have been, like, boiling on the sets. That thing Quite. looks so warm. Oh, it does, but it's... Uh, it, exactly, he is perfect in this. He looks... He is Santa in this. Winter solstice celebration. <laughs> That's right. That's right. On the twenty first, we can all shake hands and go, "Happy Winter Solstice." Winter Solstice. <laughs> I will say, a lot of this movie is a Christmas card come to life, or a yeah. drawing come to life. I mean. This is where, in my opinion, the film really starts to pick up now when he starts sort of doing the flying round. Um, we start learning the origins of rules. And mm-hmm. then when we get into the, the actual meaty story towards the end, I say meaty very lightly. If the sleigh goes over 60 miles an hour, it can't go under 60 miles an hour. All That's the right. reindeer will explode. Now, here we have fourth build, Burgess Meredith. The penguin himself! That's right. And Mickey. Get up, Santa, because Mickey loves you. <laughs> You're not done, you bum. Get up! A <laughs> uh, little coffee man says, Yes, and love the flying montage with the music accompanying. I believe they play this piece on Radio 2 every year. Yeah, the montage sequence is lovely. It's really he has nice. His beard. Yeah, he's the ancient elf. Originally, this role was going to be played by James Cagney, who wanted to play it, but he was too elderly and infirm. Well, Mad Matt says we need a Santa slash Rocky training montage. We well, do. You, 
you're not going to get a Santa training, Rocky training montage, but you are going to get a, mon- a Santa montage that's really nice. Oh man, I miss Burgess Meredith. He was a great actor. The great thing is you have no idea who this elf is in the film. It's never explained. You never see him again after this scene. (laughs) Some old dude with a coiled beard that's braided and goes on for ever. God, he has such a screen presence, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> there then, was time now. But then again, you get Santa's backstory, but you don't really need the elves, do you? No. Do you really need to know the origin of the elves, where they get their elf powers from? And Someone said it earlier. Was it Lizard Man? Yeah, hmm. the, it's the afterlife for Tolkien's elves. Yeah. <laughs> I think they go to the heavens and all they have to do is make toys forever. It's a punishment. Is that hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Calbot, thank you for the pun as well. We don't need their story, it's elf evident. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, a little coffee bandit. It is a bit like um, where he's got like a bridesmaid with his beard carriers. Yes. Yeah. I mean, let's have a look. My name's Barry Scott, not Santa Claus. They can be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Mr. Fersal. They can be good people, Santa. They wish to be. <laughs> they just need the light of goodness to show them the way. <laughs> For this reason, above all, I have sent them you. My only <laughs> figurehead. <laughs> so originally Marlon Brando was going to be the head elf, but... It, remember his lines. We, yeah, Lizard Man, he does. He kind of... There you go. Lizard Man, exactly. Christmas magic. The night never ends for Santa until he's done. There's your answer. He basically stops time. Yeah. That's the whole thing. He can move around instantly. Right, Dom, I warn you, you're going to get hit in the feels now because you are going to see Santa as you imagine him. And now they're giving the crack cocaine laced food <laughs> to the reindeer. Yeah, <laughs> have your crack. It's <laughs> uh. yeah. Time to get the reindeer high, says Calvin. <laughs> yeah, and David the- says, "Look, they're getting the hit." <laughs> <laughs> that stuff works quick. It does. <laughs> <laughs> right, but now you're going to get hit in the feels because you're going to look at this and you're like, that's Santa! David uh, P says, I don't see any female elves or are they like Tolkien elves where you can't tell the difference because of the beards? Yes. And what a great stunt. Look at that. Pulling the... Yes. They're actually pulling that sleigh around the corner. It's very similar to to Superman in that we have a scene of him flying past the camera on his first flight. Yeah. This is just whimsical. It is, isn't it? It does, little coffee bandit. The music gets you. The music's perfect in this movie. Did it just cover its eye with its ear? Yes. Yep, Chris Reeve flying past. But look at that. You tell me. 
I got a montage now. This isn't. You tell me this isn't Santa. Perfect Santa. I can't because it is. I asked for an Xbox. This is rubbish. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Fursal says, if Santa flies by the camera and winks as he goes around the earth, I'm dead. (laughs) Brandy But actually, there's a a line in this that is actually quite profound. Um, There's a line in it from one of the elves. When it comes up, I'll refer to it. Why were they sorting the mail? So is Santa potentially a reason for children not to wish to be illiterate? Oh, I wouldn't be happy with that windmill. No, that's that's a little too close to being <laughs> Crap. horrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, leave the cat alone, you little goblin. Santa, kill my brother. <laughs> well. That is incredibly neat handwriting. And it is. But that's when kids did have to. And as a cat lover, anyone who does stuff like that to a cat, yes, they'll be going up the chimney. <laughs> anyone does that to an animal, they'll be going up the chimney. Exactly. We need Krampus to come in now. Mm-hmm. Krampus is another great Christmas film for the cynics like me. Yeah. <laughs> Kitten? I didn't realise Mr. Blobby also starred in this. Mm -hmm. I want to see Santa, when he denies the presence to the child, slam that knife down in the carrot and go, It's cutting time. (laughs) (laughs) How is that hairstyle from that elf not caught on yet? He is about that. We finally get to punish the naughty kids. <laughs> well, An abacus. I hate yeah. it. But this is perfect Santa again. We're seeing here. Yeah. What you imagine? Phonics saying, "Wait, when I wrote a letter to Santa, I had to go to the post office and buy a stamp. When in the UK, we just put it in a post. Genuinely, you can." Write a letter to Santa in the UK and stick it in the post box with no stamp or anything, and it will go to Santa. Yep. And you'll get a reply. I I love it the way he kind of just magic appears and How did we come up with the, with the notion of a dude breaking into your house at night, eating your food, and leaving your gifts? Oh, sorry, that's bad. a great wipe there. Slay wipe. I've never seen that before. Yeah, that was awesome. Why are the elves so scared of Santa? Is there some office... This is wrath. ...workplace... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fat belly of jelly, I will smite that child. After I eat more sweet elf flesh. Yeah. 
Extreme Santa. Jingle All the Way actually is one of my favorite Christmas movies, and I think it's because it's cynical. Mm. I don't know. I find it quite funny. Santa's really upset now eating celery and carrots. But it's also nice the way the film almost portrays it is if Christmas is every every day. It's like every day he pops mm. out in the sleigh. Why why are there ripped Santas in the Discord? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Have we awakened some weird fetish with our Discord? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, they're making Formula One or Indy cars and Elf made. That's right. Got to get your trademark. Mr. Fersel says we're fat shaming Santa in 85. <laughs> oh. I like how even the fireplace has glitter. It's just whimsical. Everything's magical. Apart from the food, it looks kind of horrifying. Green it does. sludge. Here, Santa, yeah, it's, it's delicious g- gruel. It's ground up elf meat, is what you're saying. Now, welcome to the 80s. Santa's going to go on a killing spree of the false Santas. Mm. You are a false idol. (laughs) Crushes their skull. Turns them into coal. Yeah, exactly. Little coffee on it. We've got that scene coming up in a minute with some coke and ham. Why is the street urchin hiding from police? Because they'll take him to an orphanage. For oh. social care, he oh. doesn't want. And that thing he's doing there is a genuine thing I've heard of homeless people doing. Um, finding leftover newspaper and you stuff it inside your clothes to try to provide warmth in the cold as insulation. It's quite sad, really, isn't it? It is. And he's hiding, like I say, he's hiding from the authorities because he appears to be dishevelled and they will take him into care where he doesn't want to go. <laughs> yeah, Cal, but they, <laughs> they cut over all that era of his life. And Mad Matt's saying he's confused which era this is. Street urchins, Victoria era homes, and McDonald's. Yeah, we have a McDonald's as well, because it had a McDonald's promotion associated with the movie. Cordelia's there saying, Ah, street urchin, I'm here at this nice warm home. With a gaudy throne and a gold-plated fruit bowl. She has a step-uncle, Dominic. A step-uncle. A uncle. step-uncle? <laughs> not, even sh- not even sure. Can anyone in the Discord or on YouTube please explain <laughs> the logistics of a step-uncle to me? <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone's struggling to try and work out what a step-uncle actually is. <laughs> right, so there is here's a real thing, apparently. a The correct definition of a step-uncle is the brother of someone's stepmother or stepfather. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Mr. Fizzle. Elf assurance. That's right, we have to have a bigger wooden duck on the end of the machine. The patch matic Yes. 
uh, the days when machines could just have omatic at the end of things and we exactly. accepted it. I think now is probably an apt time where it was a quieter moment in the film, Dom, to relate the story I told you before we started. Oh, yes. About my, about my relationship with this movie. I... I saw this at the theatre when it came out. I was young. I would have been about seven, six or seven. And my mother, who was training to be a nurse at the time... Oh, Dom's disappeared. Have I? I don't know. No, you haven't. It's just the software's being a bit strange on my side here. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I was worried for a second there. And it's like you pressed a button on your phone or something, and then... Uh, I vanished. I vanished, yes. I don't know what's quite gone on there. Let's refresh Oh, yeah, now you've disappeared. There we go. I think we're all back now. I'm not sure what happened. Yes. There. Gr- <laughs> various weird little things happened there. Uh, okay, Pep Jin. Anyway, so I saw this movie when I uh, was young. My mother took me when she was a trainee nurse to the local theatre to see it with a group of children. And I had a very nice time. Met some great kids. We had a nice time watching the film. Thought it was all magical and loved it. It was only years later. I found out that that was a special screening that had been arranged at the children's hospice where my mother was doing nurse training. And I had basically seen the movie with a lot of kids who were approaching the end of their lives. So, yeah, that's my my gremlin story for this, this movie. We're seeing the machine magically shooting out millions of mediocre toys, of mediocre toys. Ah, yes, the twentieth century, where everything was mediocre, garbage. The it was made f- cheap and fast. Mm-hmm. There we go. He made more more of the toys. Ah, uh, welcome, lizard man. You're back, are you? Okay. His computer, his computer crashed. I think all the world had a little bit of a. A wobble then. Yeah, but it was shut down. And here we are. Due to the McDonald's. McDonald's hamburgers. Yeah. But you're looking at it thinking, God, McDonald's in the eighties looked better. They did. It that really Taco did. Taco Bell in the nineties. Taco Bell in the nineties was peak nineties design. In inexplicably. Inexplicably, you'll see in a minute, the A-Team van on the street. Mr. Fursal, did they put Mickey D's in it? There was a, connect, there was a promotion um, with McDonald's whereby you could get Santa Claus the movie toys and things. Is this a secret Mac and me thing that you're trying to get me to watch? Exactly. <laughs> no, it's no, there's no dance number. Don't forget your Latin verbs, Dom. Ah, yes. The Latin verbs. The best verbs. This... She has, like, a a bejeweled picture for water. Yeah. Street urchin. Come through the guarded steel fence. (laughs) <laughs> I'll leave food out for you like a stray dog and a <laughs> can of Coke. That looks delicious, really, but, Coca-Cola. But it, the way it's placed at the exactly. <laughs> yeah, little girl, you make sure that Coke sign is facing <laughs> camera when you put it down. Oh no, hey, it's checked. No, it it's just changed. Flipped, it flipped between <laughs> shots. It was Coke in one shot, and Coca-Cola in the other. You can hear his gnawing from the, yeah. from the door. 
Oh, we didn't hear the crisp opening of the can of Coke. We had the belch there. I was going to say, it's either going to be a... (sighs) Or a belch. We had both! (laughs) We had both! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but is there anyone watching this who wouldn't like to go back in time and have a McDonald's from the 80s? Yeah. Well, Dom, you probably wouldn't know, you know. No, I've, I've never had no. McDonald's from the eighties. Fortunately, <laughs> if McDonald's... I did, it would have been worrying. <laughs> it would have been worrying. It used to be better. This is old man Andrew now. Even McDonald's from the nineties in England, like there were very few yeah. ketchup dispensers, like yeah. where you could get as much ketchup as you wanted. And there was one that I went to, and I had like fifteen of these little things of ketchup. I, I was a little server boy for the restaurant. I'd go around different tables and give them ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> My mum didn't bother stopping me because. Apparently, I was helping people. Oh. Calvot's saying, not in 85, that was the year they screwed up Coke. Not in the UK, we didn't get new Coke. Mad Matt's saying he worked in McDonald's in 85. And Lil Coffee B- uh, Bandit is saying, I would have loved to have seen this on the big screen. I was born the year it came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was lucky enough just to be that little bit older to be able to see this. And it was just I- incredible on the big screen. I kind of want to go to 2001 when everyone thought that the new millennium was hyper hopeful. No, 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 no. 2000 was dreadful. <laughs> Everything was something 2000. It was great. Uh, Lizard Man saying, it depends on what I'd be having from McDonald's. It depends on the chicken nuggets or the burgers. Well, back then, the nuggets weren't only made with chicken breast, so they tasted better. And I'm going to use some Christmas magic now on YouTube. Because we have a uh, spam bot just joined the chat who is about to be blocked by me. And uh, hi, these from the channel. There we go. There's some Christmas magic. In I've the year spam 2000. Bot. The rest of the winos. <laughs> yeah, the kid's quite sassy. I'd love it if it went wrong when he tried to transport two of them and it was like a brundle fly thing. Yeah! (laughs) I am Santa Urchin now! Kill me now! Every moment I live is agony! (laughs) Again, though, this is another. You're my child now! (laughs) Come with me, Street Urchin! (laughs) There's toys for you to make. You've got just the right amount of hand dexterity. <laughs> Frostbite hasn't taken it from you yet. But it actually appears they let the act to the actors be in the uh, be in the sleigh pulled by the reindeer, <laughs> which dragged I, by reindeers. I don't think they'd allow now. Lizard Man says, I feel like this is a major breach of protocol. Well, who's going to tell Santa <laughs> off? Yeah, Lil he Coffee Bandit. rules over the elves with an iron fist. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to stand up to him? Lil the Coffee Bandit elf? says, John fe- Joe feels like John Connor levels of sassy kid in T2. He's quite a sassy. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Joe. He pushes him out. He falls for a bit, <laughs> and then he flies the sleigh under and catches him. Holds his hand and lets, her, <laughs> yeah. lets him sing a poem about, or monologue a poem. I would say a lot of this flying over New York footage looks very familiar. <laughs> Past the Pan Am building. Ah, At least it's actually... the Pan Am building. And the it's Empire State there building. For years. Well, it still is, technically. True. The building's there, it's the MetLife building now. Mm. Okay, now we'll not look at, comment on that building, so that would not be appropriate. Yeah, Please don't fly your sleigh into that building. That wouldn't. <laughs> okay, I can hear the eighties taking over the soundtrack now. David P saying, "Is that kid Lois Lane pretty much in this?" That's why he needs to monologue a poem. Yeah. I'm flying with Santa in the sky. <laughs> Maybe we'll have cherry pie. <laughs> <laughs> Got the reindeer hate him as well. Look at them. They're like, oh, this guy. Yeah, lizard man. Orphans. So many un- so many unfortunate com- uh, implications. That scene aged badly. Yeah. Yep. 
But Ernest can do that move, says Mr. Furzel. Maybe Santa can. Maybe Santa can at some point. But again, he's the most believable Santa I think I've ever seen in a movie. The whole thing is just... Whip him! Whip him good, kid! But then, as a young kid, can you imagine... I was sort of seven years old. Imagine meeting Santa one night and then him taking you up in the sky and letting you fly his sleigh. That is that is the stuff of dreams. I'm pretty sure one year as a kid, my yeah. family took me to a Santa's village where they had a sleigh and animatronic reindeers that went on a track and you sat in there with Santa and he gave you the reins and he said, go on, go on. Because I have fairly strong memories of whipping animatronic reindeer with a lash. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why this not? This is awakening so many memories in me. It really is. It really is. Yeah, his ho-ho-ho is absolutely perfect. It's infectious. Yeah. Mad Matt, maybe that's for another Christmas. That's a great 80s fantasy Ernest movie. Ernest saves Christmas. I love that movie. But that... I'm surprised the Ernest films are pretty big in England as well. I, yeah. I, everywhere I love that. Sorry. Them. I loved that shot, that silhouette of the sleigh yeah. on the sky. This is where Santa says, I've got a job to do. Oh, yeah. And he takes him like to the pit where all the other orphan children are kept. <laughs> yeah. Ah. He just leaves him on that rooftop again. <laughs> Good luck, kid. He yeah, asked for it. Well, yes, he can have anything as long as it's a low technology, low value toy. Yes. Yes. Anything about ten dollars in value, you know, is is fine. Hmm. Here, have a cookie. One of the worst American exports, Oreos. I like Oreos. Yeah, I but like Dom. Some milk with it though. Yeah, but Dom, compare it to the the majesty that is a of your Britishness, which is a chocolate hobnob. Oh yeah. Yeah. The hot numbers are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Calbot says it's tough to make a video game out of wood. Atari. No, 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 sir. Are you he? <laughs> <laughs> I asked for a street urchin for Christmas. You brought me that creepy boy. <laughs> yeah, that eats the scraps of food I throw out for him like a dog. He's my pet. Why does he have, like, soot on his nose? There's no chimneys to sweep. Oh, actually, that's a lie. You're going down chimneys all the time. Mm. But I Santa hasn't. Because he magically... Do does he just drag the kid down? <laughs> Oh, we're getting a little that... hint. Getting a little hint of something on the mantle there. It's Reagan. Reagan Alex comes to Santa. You stay here and Lizard... take all the blame. <laughs> Lizard Man says, Santa brought me a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, because what's happened now is Santa's now left Joe then when her uh, nanny wakes up. And finds her in the living room at night with a street urchin. Yeah, <laughs> there won't be any any drama uncle. to be had. <laughs> Is this the Sopranos? Well, you can actually see these are all British British houses and British streets because it's shot over here. They've yeah, tried to I make do. it look like the UK, but you can see like the lines on the road, they're covered in leaves and stuff. Yeah, it's very British. Like the no houses one. are, yeah. Oh no, what nefarious. 
That's for all your <laughs> damn dreams, kid. <laughs> Mr. Furzel has a question for you in Discord, Dom. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, what the hell are they? <laughs> Maybe? I, I, I've never heard them called burgers, though. Unless you're talking about of the beef variety slash ham. But I don't know what they are. Now, fudge cookies made in Baltimore. Well, I need to try them because I tried a Christmas Kringle for the first time, like this year from Wisconsin. My buddy sent it over to me, and it was, it was amazing. I just posted a photo to possibly the greatest biscuit in the world ever. What, which uh, is the, ginger the, hobnobs or whatever they are. Chocolate hobnobs. Yeah. British chocolate hobnobs are the peak. But back to the movie. The little coffee bandit says the reveal of BZ as. Uh, Cornelia's step-uncle is so over-the-top evil, and John Lithgow is having the best time chewing scenery in this film, yeah. <laughs> just wait till we get John Lithgow in this. He is just... They said, John, you're giving a 10 in your performance. Yes, 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 yes. Do you think you'd turn it to a 20? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know where there's the line you don't want to cross when you're acting, John? Yeah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Leap over around it. it. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, Mr. Furzel, John Lithgow is about to take over the movie. <laughs> That's why I said, if you look very carefully, you can see him. In the scene where Santa was stood in front of the fireplace eating the cookies, you could actually see a photo of him. Yep, David, exactly. He takes his role in this movie to new heights. He goes so over the top. And the movie does go suddenly like, we we're going in a different direction. I'd die for that reindeer. I would actually die for it. <laughs> so <laughs> if anything happened to that reindeer, I would kill every single person in this room and then myself. Yes. I do think that it's funny, the cutification of animals, regardless of what they are, they just turn them into a dog. Yeah. <laughs> you just make them out to be a dog. What is that stick? The the reindeer beating stick? That's Why right. make it cry? <laughs> Thank God the tyrant is gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we look at this, though. This, this is the saddest thing ever. The elf's walking with a bindle. Why has he been kicked out? Santa Claus is evil. <laughs> No, Santa didn't kick him out. He felt he's let Santa down, so he has no choice but to leave. Ah, I see. You've sullied the good name of Santa. Leave, you hobo of an elf. So they put him into a chamber, into a big crystal chamber, and you see a skeleton. And then you see him <laughs> look like a non... Bright up... No, this is... It burns if you set it on fire? Yeah. You touch it with a cigarette and it... <laughs> well, <basically>... yeah. <laughs> He's wearing the most mafioso pinstripe suit you could have. Yeah. It rattles because it's full of broken nails and glass. Broken and nails and <laughs> broken glass and nails. Even. He's very much in the Lex Luthor camp of bad guys, isn't he? The old guy in yeah. Lex Luthor.
And he's got a bad it's guy, Kane. Mean. Yeah. He's got a bad guy, Kane, and a simpering assistant. D- yeah, he has a number of them by the looks of it. The guy who was next to him in court seemed like a snivelling assistant as well. <laughs> they want to be paid. What do we do, BZ? <laughs> ah, yes. Oof, that that eighties just hit me like a <laughs> like a yeah. truck. Oh yeah. I think I actually had the toy that, that was based on the electro ampho car or whatever it's called. Look, there's the A team van randomly behind him. Yes. What the hell? This is the most evil... Look at how much shag carpeting's there. It's... I swear, this is the this is the leftovers of uh, the office of Ross Webster From... in Superman 3. 3? I was about to say! Yeah! <laughs> it's Those even crazy, like Ross Webster... whimsical Web... British... <laughs> It's even like Ross Webster's office that it's got photographs of himself all over of the world. Of himself everywhere. <laughs> right, who was not expecting to see John Lithgow appear? <laughs> Looking like a mobster. Lunatic, the dude just teleported across your entire office. Yeah, Lizaban says, Patch, maybe don't pick up just any toy maker you happen to see in the stores. Help their elf. Oh, God. You are with the Federal Trade Commission. <laughs> With pride, <laughs> yes. We're about to get one of the best line deliveries ever in a movie. It's the response. You'll you'll know when we get to it. Yes. Good old coffee bandit, you know it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But that's the line. Let's keep it that way. Yeah, that's all of us watching him say that. <laughs> I like how he has BZ stitched into every chair. Get ready, Dom. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's how you say that line. <laughs> exactly, that line lives <laughs> rent free in your head forever. Fuck free! Taught. Oh. It's crystal meth. Oh, that's a, it's just some great little details. Even there, in the, um, in the factory, it says, the uh, BZ Company does not recognise any union, nor should you. <laughs> Quantity is your responsibility. It's evil, this factory. Yeah, Tinkerbell ain't going to be happy about this lizard man. Patch office. Uh, Mad Matt wants to know we're going to watch Buckaroo Banzai. That'll be sometime next year. We, we will. One of my favourites. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even, he's the same as us, isn't he? He's articulating. Let's kidnap him, shall we? I don't... Right, on a serious note, I don't know if the story is trying to infer that they had a son who died. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Mm. Which makes things a little more depressing. Yes. Don't forget, their, their, their son would have died of dysentery or some plague or something. I know. Oh, these are horrifying. What are these nightmares in the background? And this is going on every channel in every country at the same time. Is it bad that I can imagine this as a commercial? Yeah. Like, legitimately? <laughs> Exactly, maybe, Mad Matt, they left the children on the Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> left the child on the Oregon Trail, yeah. One of us must die so the others could live. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jimmy. You are the, the, the most plump and succulent. Just Oh my god, Eve! Even has the <laughs> laugh and the snap zoom. <laughs> he is he is pantomime, isn't he? Yes. Which is what's great. Okay, now we need a, a Santa Claus montage where he rambos up or yeah. uh, like commandos. Gritty, up. gritty Santa. <laughs> and if you heard sound effects from Superman three. You were about to hear them again. 
literally from the computer at the end of Superman 3. Every sound effect is the same. It's the Homer Simpson car. Oh, be honest, you'd want to go in this. Yeah, of course I would. Look at it. It's gaudy and insane. Why are the military there? <laughs> Oh, yes, cocaine. No. <laughs> I forgot that it's fueled by cocaine. <laughs> what the fuck is that? You are looking very <laughs> befuddled there, Dom. <laughs> Just make sure I didn't... My wife didn't spike my coffee with anything. <laughs> yeah. John, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> what are those in the back? Blocks of cocaine? No, they're the lollies. Mmm. Well, that's it. That's all he's giving him out. Lollies. Oh, wait. Wait. So he's somehow harnessing the same power as Santa. Maybe because he's an elf and he can oh, tap well, into the power. All it takes is some reindeer coke and you can fly. Yeah. There is something magical, though, just every time you see the Santa sleigh flying over a city. Yeah. Uh... I can't help but hear Coca-Cola commercials, though. <laughs> exactly. Is that? No. It couldn't be. Why, it is. Cocaine. What's quite amazing is, though, the film takes place over at least a year, if not two years, for the kids, and they don't age the way children yeah. do. I mean, Joe might... I can appreciate Joe wouldn't grow, because he's obviously malnourished. <laughs> <laughs> but Cordelia should. Well, she's a rich yeah. girl, so rich girls don't age, really. They, they say for well, a little, young. little coffee bandit says, and Joe is still homeless. It's a bit sad. It is. It is. Lizard Man, yes. So the main story is taking place over multiple years now. So, yeah. It's the fact they play basically every Christmas is happening almost next to each other. Yeah. Like, oh, we're having another Christmas in a week. And you've cleaned your face. Those bullies really did a number on you. We get television up there in the North Pole. Well, they do. They were watching it on a wooden television. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting Come my in. fix, man. <laughs> Come in. You can burn it in that trash can fire that you start to keep warm. <laughs> They're mostly coming no. right. Mostly. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be. <laughs> if I received that off Sandra, I'd be like, what the, why, have you given me an why have you given me an ornament? <laughs> yeah, where can I, I live, live on this? I live on the street. <laughs> I live on the street. I, everything I on the gets street taken from me. From me. And everything I keep has to stay in my coat. Right? And you've given me an 18 inch tall lump of wood <laughs> shaped like a bloody elf. Thanks, you jerk. Yeah. You know, a coat might have been nice. 
Maybe some food? What the hell is it? <laughs> oh, it's the lollipops from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. They pretty much are. They are... These are... <laughs> These are Patch's lollies, and they have a magic... They've got the reindeer stuff in them. What is this kid wearing? Yeah. Watch. Look. Here we go. You can't keep the cookies away from me no more, Mum. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is, though, I want to know if these lollies wore off, like, gradually, or if it was, like, a sudden <laughs> it's thing. It's a cut-off thing. Yeah. Not like you gradually float down to the floor. If you're, like, you're, you're, like, you're got it ten, ten foot up getting cookies, <laughs> and it just lands on his face on the kitchen floor. And we have another spam bot. Let us remove it. <laughs> this guy was like sued, right? Like moments before he met Patches. Well, not just for, sued. For... He was he was basically threatened with his Disbarred. company being shut down. Now his company's license to trade being removed by the Federal Trade Commission. Here you are for toy safety for basically toys that like like barbecue fuel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everyone purchased lollipops that make you fly, and no, no, one no, 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 no. He gave them away. Oh yeah, that's a good point. And now we see where the film is a bit in, almost hypocritical, as I was saying earlier. When we see BZ's next plan, I'll explain. I think the North Pole doesn't have any polar bears. They import There's them. There's the South Pole that does. They import them! Yeah. <laughs> the slaves. <laughs> Meat for the gruel. We've got, to, we've got to mix it up every now and then. Ground up elf. You know, it's kind of and gamey after bear. a while. <laughs> oh, the eye fluttering. <laughs> Lithgow, you god. Death, that's a bit of scenery over there. You didn't devour a Lithgow. <laughs> you need to... Fly high in the sky. Oh, he's having cigars all wrong. He's just excreting the smoke immediately. So he's doing it purely to be a villain. And the Gerns? He's so maniacal. <laughs> and this is the conversation that would have happened had the film been a success with the studio. It's a, it's a teeny tiny bit on the nose right there, yes. Christmas too! Electric boogaloo. Yeah. But the idea is basically a businessman.
Oh, Little Coffee Bandit. Are you not watching the film live with us? Oh, what a shame. Uh, yeah, we're past that. We just got to where he's revealed uh, Christmas 2. Mm. Um, but, yeah. The almost hypocrisy of the film is that this is a major studio trying to monetize and commercialize the origin of Santa Claus and Christmas in the way that the villain of the film is trying to do. I always love it when studios do that. <laughs> Don't give up, Santa. You can do it. <laughs> well, look, look, everyone, it ha- kick his ass. Hopefully, you can join us for a future film. Bring a copy along with us. It's great to have you joining us. Just watching us on on YouTube. So Joe is in typical, well, British rain. Uh, Mad Matt, I was about to say that. Yes, it's basically the plot for the the Santa Clauses on Disney Plus. Yes. Yeah, Lizard Man, that's a really good point. This feels like someone was looking at studio notes for the movie and decided to shove some of it in the script to mock the executives. Did he just squeak? Like... Whistling through his teeth. Some cool kids used to be able to do it in the 80s. It's a lost start. It, it looked like he opened his mouth and the noise just erupted from him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, scale the wall. And now this is very oh. Willy Wonka, this bit here. Yeah. Radioactive candy canes, gotta love them. That meter makes no sense. No. Unless the needle goes all the way around that way. I don't know. It's confusing me. Three soup spoons of glitter. Is that what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Most likely. I'm going to go with that. And you know what? Probably if I reached out to Quentin Tarantino and he actually heard me and I suggested that, he'd probably say... Yes, because he's such a cool film fan of just obscure stuff. <laughs> yeah. He's like, how did you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Years people have been guessing. Marcellus Wallace's soul. Everyone's guessed everything, but no one yeah. knew it was from Santa Claus the movie. The movie. <laughs> the reindeer cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let a, sh- a wet street urchin on your bed, you fool. Can we, I know we're taking a lot of Mickey out of the film, like in the, making fun of it, but can we say how well shot some of the scenes in the North Park? They're really nicely lit. They're gorgeous. These sets are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Lizard Man saying, speaking of someone who's born in March... It's a terrible time for a holiday. It's cold, wet, miserable. Nobody's happy unless they're drinking heavily. There's still snow around and everything. Well, Mad Matt's put a picture of the the Candyman from uh, Doctor Who Season 7. But they got in trouble with a UK sweet manufacturer because he looked remarkably like a character called Bertie Bassett. Yep, he looks just like Bertie Bassett. Christmas 2, question mark? One of these days, I'm going to be rich enough to have gaudy oil paintings everywhere as well. That's the dream, isn't it? Yep. I bloody hate licorice all sorts. And now we're going to see another 80s trope. Do you remember when we saw Hawk the Slayer, all the chickens were clearly pre-cooked supermarket bought catering ones with that weird yellow, that weird yellowy kind of wrinkled skin because they've been commercially cooked? We're about to see one in the fridge in his house. She just wants a kid to take care of. 
Yeah. Like a pet. What is this basement? The Amityville house basement? Considering how l- luscious and beautiful the house upstairs is. Yeah. Lizard Man saying, are they married now, the kids? <laughs> there you go, see one of those chickens, another one of them. Yep. Yep. Commercially prepared chicken. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah, but no, what he's done is he's being incredibly... He's given him Pap's Blue Ribbon. <laughs> yeah, when he drinks the, the cognac, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> we have multiple entrances to the basement? Jesus, kid. It's a wine cellar as well. Now, here's a bit of trivia for those who are his henchman chauffeur is played by the same actor, British actor, who played the witch smeller in Blackadder. If you ever watched the original series, The Blackadder, he plays the witch smeller perceivant. I haven't seen the original Blackadder in too many years. The original uh, Blackadder is the one series I don't watch as much as the others, because yes. Blackadder's character really comes into his own in season two. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> See, bits of it are great, aren't they? Here? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, those grapes look depressing. Adder's alive? Brian Blessed. He would have made a great Santa Claus. I've seen him play it casually, and he's just over the top, but wonderful in that Brian Blessed way. <laughs> Lizard Man says, I'll deal with this child later. And that doesn't sound suspiciously evil at all. <laughs> Industrious. Well, that table didn't look very sturdy. Well, that's a good point, David. And I'll, I'll elaborate on that in a second, which is, does it mean that if the reindeer get hot after eating their cocaine, they could explode? <laughs> Since the chemical does. I mean, so what happens like, when he's delivering presents in Egypt or... Places like that. That's where Australia. Goes in Australia, yeah. They aren't the original. They're ready to go. I'm not the original Dasher and Dancer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they exploded. Yeah. Ah, I think everyone had book. that bedside light in the eighties. I know I did. Oh no, my claustrophobia would not let that happen. He's sleeping in a writing bureau, effectively. He is. Ah, thank you, Calbot. The DP for this movie was also the DP for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It stands to reason. They gagged and bound him to a pipe! (laughs) That's right, in a factory that's going to explode. He is 
Lex Luthor. <laughs> he's abs- He's possibly more evil. Lex Luthor didn't kill any plot to kill children directly, did he? No, it was all an accident. No, but what I mean is Lex didn't care about the people he was going to who were going to die as part of his plan, but he didn't go out his way to have people killed. Now that is the thermometer I want for when I'm poorly. This little thing of, well, it's just flu. <laughs> it's the thermometer. It's just flu. I don't care. You think <laughs> Well, Santa. Yeah, he's an action hero now. Yep, the commando thing's going to happen. They got flu. Reindeer flu. I wonder, and I don't know this, but I wonder if the reason for the two reindeer being missing from this was possibly, I don't know, was there a problem with some animatronics or the number of reindeer for a yeah. shot? Yeah, some kind of continuity things. Are they? It's very weird how there's just some random toys left behind. Hmm. Yeah, but also you've not got the weight of half a trillion tons of yeah. toys in the uh, sleigh as well, so that might help. I know Rudolph the gets his score, own movies. The Superman. score is great. Yeah, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Proper building up to a theme. I just need Lee Majors to come in, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> That's really sinister how he sat there in the chair. Just watching it, yeah. Poor Patches. I must get more reindeer cocaine from my stash in that old filing cabinet. What's that? Orphan tears? Ah, that'll work just as good. (laughs) Your fingernails, yes. 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 They'll provide a 30% speed increase if I... <laughs> Your bone marrow crashed. Yeah, you ruined Christmas, Patch. Yeah. Why? You ruined Christmas because you gave everyone a free lollipop that made them fry, fly. You mean Santa gave me some crummy picture of you? All right, girl, spill the beans. Where's the kid? Uh, right. Chomping on a cigar. Saddle up. <laughs> <laughs> we got Christmas to save. <laughs> yeah. The fact this is in broad daylight as well. <laughs> and the sleigh in March... Well, no, it's uh, January, middle of January. The sleigh's flying around in broad daylight. Choose your weapon of choice, kid. Would you like the AK-47, the rocket launcher, or the machete? <laughs> Mr. Fersal says, somebody call Kiss. Kiss saves Santa. Oh, no. Of course, Kiss made a friggin'... <laughs> Just explodes the moment again. Patch, I know you. it's cool your car flies, I guess, 
But it's a bit crappy looking, really, isn't it, Patch? Here we go. <laughs> we're going to one of the the weirdest plot lines ever in the movie we're going to have in a minute. Weirdest plot points ever. Your missile toe is no match for my toe missile. <laughs> <laughs> We've arrested you for doing crime. Yes. But There's again, we get one we, more criminal up there. But this is awesome. We get such a great shot now from John Lithgow. <laughs> is he going to weaponize? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> He's eating magic magic candy canes that let him fly. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really sinister what happens. It's just as well that the candy ca that the um, lollipops which were made of the same. Well, no, it's just as well the lollipops which he delivered earlier that were made from the same stuff as the candy canes didn't explode. Yes, yes, it makes no sense. Oh no 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 no! I'm going to ask you, Dom, to not question <laughs> something we're about to see in a moment. <laughs> What would have been beautiful was if they showed Clark Kent like trying to get back to the fortress when he hadn't got his powers and they gave him a lift. Yeah. And that, boys and girls, that, boys and girls, is how uh, Superman got his powers back. Santa gave him a lift. Yeah. Oh, that's true. He did. He did. Up the, it was because he upped the content of the uh, ingredient in the candy cane scale. What a good spot. Fraglord saying he had a hard time. Sans took a hard pass. Yeah, it's a good fun ride, this film, Fraglord. If you can find it, please rewatch it with the commentary. You'll have a lot of fun. Yeah. Don't gaslight the reindeers like that. That's a bit harsh. You, don't, you clearly don't says, love enough. <laughs> the uh, lollies were soft, which I always found a bit strange. Chewy lollipops. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here it comes. The chain reaction of explosives. Here we go. Hello. So, right, we're about to find out something that's described as the only way. And afterwards, Dom, I want you to explain to me why it is not the only way. I'm hearing Pac-Man sounds. We go, Dom. The super duper looper. The super duper looper apparently is the only way to save them. So the way to save them from the car that's going to explode, right, is to fly under them. Uh. <laughs> Hang on. Keep going. Them explode! No, and then. <laughs> but that was the only way to save them. Yep, the only way. I mean, R makes perfect sense. I don't know what you're you mean you, you mean rather than fly the sleigh, maybe under the car, have them jump into it there when it's there, abandon the car and fly off, time nah. it. <laughs> yeah. Nope. It was the only way. The super duper looper. <laughs> It's the only way. Lizard Man says... 
don't, I don't think I want a flying car anymore. And Lil Coffey says, the last frame of this film is insane. You could never have predicted it, no. Did the screenwriter, like, take some reindeer cocaine and just think, this is genius, this is a great idea, this needs to happen. Santa does a loop-de-loop in the friggin' air, does a barrel yeah, but, roll and saves but, the day. But the Super Duper Looper was uh, lined up earlier in the film where they couldn't do it. Was it? That was what they were trying to do when they flew up the side of the Twin Towers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't. Why? And now Just they're going to live. The weight. And now they're going to live in the North Pole, doing being in a school dancing with Santa. And... You're going to become elves and work for free, yes. making toys for other kids. Yeah, what the kids don't realise is Uncle John Lithgow was flown to the sun. Hang on, but what you don't realise is <laughs> there's actually something really sinister and terrible too. Remember, when they're in the North Pole, though, they don't age, so those kids will be eternally children. There we go, perfect. <laughs> little hands can make little... Hang on, hang on. And someone said about someone waving at the camera <laughs> in space. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just love it, someone did it, and you just see his head going... So who was it who wanted the uh, looking at the camera almost and waving? <laughs> That's what we just about got, Mr. Furzel. Exactly. Everybody, this has been so much fun. It's a very <laughs> silly, fun <laughs> fantasy movie. The production values are off the scale in parts of it. <laughs> also, we've oh seen the greatest, God. basically the greatest Santa performance ever. Right, I want everyone who's... If you've seen this for the first time or a million times on YouTube and on Discord, wherever you're watching us from, please tell us what you think of this. Dom? This is amazing. This is such a trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's utterly bonkers. It is. It's really weird. <laughs> but it's gorgeous to look at. It is. It's a very pretty film. The way I'd recommend watching this film going forwards, Dom, is uh, with your wife... Uh, get into the tin of Quality Street, or whatever you have in America, and half a bottle of Baileys each sat on the sofa. Take a drink every time something nonsensical happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad we did this, though. This is a proper British classic. But the, the pedigree of all the names of the people working on this are the Superman people. It's amazingly well put together. So... Is it a film that you guys would re Dom, would you rewatch this? Oh, for sure. I'm gonna rewatch this. This is peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Furzel says that was definitely a movie. Phonic says yes it was. <laughs> Calwell says pretty weird, so pretty weird. Uh, Elizabeth says, well, you know, that was actually fun. Glad I showed up. If only for that ending where John Lithgow flies into space after he had to come to <laughs> Man, Max says, mind blown. And uh, Fraglord says, just wanted to wish everyone a wonderful Christmas. These watch parties are the highlight of most weeks. Uh, until we get to Robocop 3, that is. And Brainwire says, that was a crazy fun movie. Well, let's address potentially the elephant in the room. Next, a week today, as you all know, is Christmas Day. Dom and I will be celebrating with our families and we will not be here live. However, we're not going to see you go without. We are going to record a watch party that will go live at the normal time on the YouTube channel for you all for Christmas Evil, mm. the horror film. Mm. And it will be a, it will premiere, uh, it will premiere live at the normal time for everyone to watch. Um, I think Robin's going to be joining us and we'll have a great time for that. And, you know, so you get to see us in your homes on Christmas Day if you, you know, if you're a loose end or you just want a bit of fun or just want to chill. So we'll be there for that. Uh, and then we will be back in two weeks today live uh, in 1st of January 2023. God, that sounds like the far future, doesn't it? It does. And we will be watching The Adams Family from the 90s, which is going to be so much fun. I'm really looking forward to it. As we start to move a little more towards a bit more 90s stuff. But everybody, 
if we don't see you next week, have the most wonderful Christmas. Stay safe, look after each other, be kind. Try to let the Christmas spirit go through you and have a wonderful time. And we'll be back on live, like I say, on the 1st of January. Um, but next week, you'll get a pre-recorded watch party, which I think will be a lot of fun. So everyone, Merry Christmas and stay safe. I'll hand over to Dom. Happy holidays, everyone. It's been a great year with all of you. And I'm looking forward to... Ha- Someone had to do it. I'll see you next year. <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll see You'll see us in a week uh, for, yes, Christmas Evil. Arguably a superior Christmas film with Ooh. a superior Ooh. Santa. <laughs> I don't. Christmas know. horror movies are my favorite kind of Christmas movies. I love horror movies, and they always go weird with Christmas. So, and Christmas Evil is no exception. Exactly. But everybody, stay safe, have a merry Christmas and a happy New Year, and we'll see you live. Well, in seven days, pre-recorded live in fourteen. Bye bye. See you then.